Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Deanna. I am the owner of The Series Boutique as well as the Facebook group Tumblr Tutors. A few weeks ago I got hurt at work and basically what that means is that I've had a lot of time to sit around and watch TikTok. And I don't know what side of TikTok you guys are on, but lately I've been on the conspiracy theory, UFO side of it. <laughs> And so this week I was inspired to give you guys a Northern Lights tutorial, which is something I get asked for a lot. However, I put a little bit of a weird twist on it. I am absolutely obsessed with making this cup. I've made this design on a ton of different style cups this week. And I really hope you guys love it as much as I do. As always, I will have all of the products that I've used as well as some discount codes for you guys to enjoy linked in the description below. Let's get into it. So we're starting off with a 24 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia spray painted in green apple Rust-Oleum spray paint. I went ahead and mixed up about 5 mLs of Counterculture DIY's Fast Setting Epoxy. That is 2.5 mLs of Part A and 2.5 mLs of Part B. We are using such a tiny amount of epoxy because we are doing the epoxy method to go ahead and apply our first layer of glitter. You want to be sure that that epoxy layer is completely smooth because any lumps and bumps will be able to be seen through your glitter. So now I am going in with Jax from Peachy Olive Glitters. Jax is a little bit of a chunkier glitter, so I'm just sprinkling it around my cup to help give my fine glitter a little bit more dimension. Next up, I'm going in with Double Dare from Peachy Olive Glitters. Double Dare is a really pretty lime or neon green glitter. It is a fine cut glitter. So this is kind of filling in between our chunkier glitter that we laid down first. So now I mixed up about 30 mLs of CCDIY's Fast Set Epoxy and here's where I decided that I wanted to have a little bit more dimension, um, but I also wanted it to glow in the dark. So I went ahead and on top of my epoxy, I mixed in more of Jax, more of Double Dare, and I also added um, some glow powder, which is from Backfist Customs, and it goes from colorless to glow green. So I'm just making sure I mix that in really, really well together. And then I'm going to apply it right on top of that raw glitter. And it is going to go ahead and do a couple things for us. Number one, it is going to give us our epoxy coat. Number two, it is going to add even more dimension to that green glitter. And number three, it is going to glow for us. It is going to be glow in the dark and it is going to be absolutely gorgeous. We do want to make sure that we have full coverage and we also want to make sure that we pop any bubbles with our torch. Next up, we're going to go ahead and sand. Um, I'm just using my hand sander because of my injury, but you guys can go ahead and use your regular sandpaper. Just make sure that you do get a really good sanding on that top edge. You just want to make sure that when we go to spray paint later and clean up our edge, that you'll not expose any of the green glitter. Next off, we're going to start taping off a small triangle for our beam. And this doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be somewhat of a triangle. I try to make it so that the tape perfectly overlaps at the top, so that the top is one inch. And then I think my bottom is about, I don't know, maybe three to three and a half inches. Um, I just kind of eyeballed it. Just a, a little bit of a TP, if you will. Now I'm just going in and making sure that our tape is really nice and cleaned up the way that we want it to look. I go in and clean up the edges and now I am going and cutting that bottom edge to make a nice straight line across. 
then you'll see me go in and clean up that top edge i just go straight across that top and then i'm going to go ahead and spray paint the whole cup black now i'm going in with some more facet i mixed about 15 mls of ccdios fast setting epoxy that's seven and a half mls of part a seven and a half of part b and i'm just putting an all over coat except for where our tape lines were i do go a little bit over the edge of the tape but i for the most part leave it exposed that way we can find it later on now i'm going in with my torch and i am popping any and all bubbles that i see next up we're going in with the northern lights mica bundle from tropic glitter company i am starting off with the green and i'm going in with a little fan brush and i'm just taking a tiny bit and dotting it onto my cup i'm going at an angle to try to give it like a little bit of a swirl look and I'm not putting too much of the green on because I do have a couple other colors that I want to use. This pack comes with five different colors. It comes with a green, a blue, a purple, a pink, and a yellow. I'm going to be using the green, the blue, and the purple. So this is me going in with the blue right now. It is so pretty i know it looks a little bit weird at this angle but you'll be able to kind of see as it comes around right there that it is blue it's a little bit of a color shift it is so pretty so i'm kind of just filling in all the spaces trying to give them a little bit of space this right here is the purple and i'm trying to give them some space but i'm also trying to make sure that there's no like no spot that's left needing i'm leaving the bottom part of our tumbler a little bit bare because our mountains are going to be there but i am going down um quite a bit because i do want the lights to peek through the mountains now i'm going to grab a flat brush and i am just going to start dragging the brush through the epoxy and i'm doing up and down motions and you'll see that it drags those micas in a way that makes them look like northern lights it is so pretty and do not worry about getting epoxy on your brushes i use these brushes all the time as soon as i'm done i go ahead and drop them in a little cup of rubbing alcohol and i kind of just swish them around for a little bit and once i dry them off they are good to go so next step i'm going to go ahead and stop my turner and i'm going to use my exacto knife to carefully peel off that section that we had taped off earlier the reason why we're doing this is i'm going to add some of that epoxy that we used to go over our black spray paint i'm just going to go ahead and fill in that section so that we have one smooth layer instead of having an all over layer and then the dip in where this is we're just going to have one full layer of epoxy so i'm just being very careful not to touch any of the micas and drag them into this section but at the same time i'm also trying to make sure that i am getting all the way up against all of those black edges then i'm going to go ahead and hit it with my torch to kind of join the two different epoxy sections together and we get her spinning again now that our epoxy is dry i'm going to go in with my exacto knife and clean up that rim you guys already know the drill we clean up our rims in between every epoxy coat to make sure that we're setting ourselves up for success then i'm going in with a quick all over sand nothing crazy unless you have some lumps and bumps then you can go a little bit wilder but for me i just need a little bit of a sand and then i'm just exposing some stainless steel at the top now i'm going to start to tape off the bottom half of my cup i am using a one inch tape it's the same tape that we used earlier 
and I am just slightly overlapping them to make sure that there's no spaces in between. And I am doing four pieces, so that's the bottom four inches of my cup that I am taping off. And this is gonna help us carve out our mountains. I start and end my tape in the green just so that it's easier to find at the end. Now that we've got our tape on there, I'm going in with a Sharpie. You could use a pen or whatever you have on hand. And I'm kind of just sketching out where I want my mountains to be. Um, just make sure that you go up a little bit higher on some, down a little bit further on others. You do not have to go over the green section. And then once I know where I want them, I'm going in and making the line that I know for a fact I want to cut a little bit darker just so that I know exactly where to go. Then I'm going in with my X-Acto knife and I'm following that line roughly. Um, I'm just making sure that I make a jagged edge. It doesn't have to be perfect to the lines, but that was just kind of like a, an estimate of where we know we want our lines to be, but it doesn't have to be exact. So I'm just going all the way around, making sure that I give enough pressure to get through that tape and get through um, any overlapping of the tape, but also making sure not to press too hard because we don't want to cut our epoxy um, in a way that when we peel up the tape, the epoxy is going to peel up too. So now that I'm all the way around my mountains, I'm going to go ahead and cut a line down the sides of our green beam. Then I'm going to go ahead and start lifting the tape away, except for the tape over the green beam. And I am going to just peel layer by layer. And what we're doing here is peeling away the section that is going to be spray painted to look like our mountains. So the rule of thumb here is if you do not want spray paint on it, you do not peel it off. Right now, as you're peeling pieces off, this is going to be your chance to adjust how you want your mountains. If you peel off a piece and you're like, mm, that doesn't really look like a mountain, now is your chance to go ahead and cut a little bit more with your X-Acto knife. And you don't have to do this part. I am just being extremely cautious. We are going to go ahead and block off that top half, but I want to make sure 100% that I am not getting any spray paint on my green beam. Just because it does glow in the dark, I don't want to have any surprises later on and accidentally have spray paint where it's not supposed to be. So I am being extra cautious here. Again, you do not have to do this. Um, it's just something that I am choosing to do, but I am blocking off my green beam um, once again. Now I'm going to go in with some press and seal. You can use saran wrap. This is just what I had in my workspace. Um, and I am just kind of blocking off anything above where our tape is. And this is going to help make sure that we don't get spray paint where we don't want it. So since I can't hold my cup out at the moment, I had to prop up my handy helper and I'm so sorry, but my video is a little bit cut off, but I sprayed the bottom with black. Then I'm going to go in and ombre some, just a little bit of our Evening Navy. These are all Rust-Oleum brand spray paints, by the way. This is Evening Navy. I'm gonna get the majority of the mountains in this color. And then I'm going to aim some winter gray spray paint, just a light spritz. I'm aiming it towards my saran wrap and I'm just going to give a quick mist. So now that it's back and dry, I'm gonna come and take off, I keep calling it saran wrap, but it's press and seal. I'm gonna take that off and I am going to start peeling up all of our tape that we had laid down. 
I want to make sure that I'm taking off the tape in the layers that they were put on because I don't want to accidentally slip and scratch our paint or if there's one section that's a little bit um, more dry than others, I just want to make sure that we are not messing up our um, mountains. When paint is in an ombre situation, it is way more difficult to fix um, any mess ups because you have to worry about multiple colors as opposed to just touching up one color. And she's pretty so far. So now I went ahead and cut out a tree line SVG that I had found on Etsy. I'll go ahead and link the one that I used below, but you can really just search tree line SVG and use whichever one is your favorite whatever pops up this one just happened to be mine and i cut it out on black vinyl and i am lining it up with the bottom line of our green beam and i'm just wrapping it around the cup i pick it up and place it back down every once in a while um, just to make sure that I don't have any bubbles, although black in general on cups and under epoxy is extremely forgiving. So even if there is a bubble or if there's a mistake where we have to use a black acrylic pen, you will not be able to notice it once it is under epoxy. So I went ahead and made my tree line about two inches high and I'm pretty sure that these are about six inches long. Um, I went ahead and cut out three different pieces of it just in case I needed to mix and match my little trees, which I do end up doing. Um, I want to make sure that I don't have super tall trees over my beam because I kind of want to make it look like um, it is between the trees and not necessarily behind all of the trees if that makes literally any sense at all but i just make my way around and i piece together what i think is going to look best for this particular design then i went ahead and cut out my little ufo and i am weeding all of the little circles and getting all the pieces that I don't want in there out. And then I decided that I didn't like it all one color. So I was going to go ahead and add another color in there. So I went ahead and weeded out the pieces that I wanted to make a different color. And I went ahead and stuck it on my cup and I made sure to place it down low enough so that it looked like the beam was coming out of the center. So because I did that and placed it lower than where I put the beam, I went ahead and colored in the top part of the beam with an acrylic paint pen. And that way, when I go to put the color that I really want over there, you won't even be able to see it. You just won't see the green. Remember what I said earlier about black being super forgiving? So I picked out this really, really pretty hot pink, purple, orange, opal vinyl. I'm not even 100% sure which brand it is. I do know that I got it from my local vinyl shop. Um, but I will go ahead and link something similar to it down below. And I'm just going to go ahead and place it where the parts were that we took off that were gray. So I'm going to go ahead and line up the little piece that's inside of the gray. And that's kind of how I'm going to gauge where the pieces are supposed to go. And there we go. And she looks pretty good. I'm happy with this color choice. Look at that vinyl. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I'm going in with a Posca paint pen. I will link the exact pen that I'm using down below. I did get mine at my local craft store. So like I said, I'll link it down below and you guys can um, find it at yours or you can order it through the Amazon link, whichever you prefer. But I am just going in 
and making little stars in the sky. First, I'm starting off with all over single sized dots and just kind of placing them sporadically. Then I'm going to go in and start making some of those dots a little bit thicker than others. And then I'm also, while I'm doing that, I'm going to start making these little stars. To make the little stars, I'm literally just doing little plus signs. So I'm going through and I'm making some of the stars a little bit thicker and I'm doing some plus signs every once in a while. And then after that, I'm going to make even smaller stars. So like little teeny tiny taps against the cup of my paint pen. And I'm just gonna fill it in. And ta-da, we have a beautiful night sky. And our next piece to add is our little guy getting beamed up. <laughs> He's so cute. I love him. So now I'm using my cup cradle from Kelbell Customs to help line up my design so that I can place a decal on the exact opposite side. So I went ahead and typed out this anywhere but here because please, the way the world is working right now, take me away okay but um i typed this out on my silhouette the font is called internet friends i got it for free from defont.com and i'm just going to place it in the sky just over the mountains and it is so cute and next I mixed up 30 mls, that is 15 mls of part A and 15 mls of part B of Counterculture DIY's Artist Resin. And I am just doing my last all over coat. I'm just making sure that I've got full coverage and that I am getting from top to bottom with no lumps, no bumps, no extra epoxy. Any extra epoxy is being taken off with my glove and I'm hitting it with my torch. You know, I say I love a lot of the cups that I make, but I really, really, really am obsessed with this cup. Look at it in the UV light. Oh my gosh. And then the lights are gonna go off and she glows. Oh my gosh, I love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them down below. Be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at D Series Boutique. Also, come hang out with us in my Facebook group for makers, Tumblr tutors, linked in the description below. See you guys next time.